Iceland is a wild and dangerous country. Home to some of the most extreme and dynamic landscapes on the planet. certainly one of the most inhospitable countries on earth. As well as being one of the wildest places on earth, it's also a refuge to the world's biggest bird migration. And we've come here to test out the 600mm f4 Nikkor Super Telephoto lens. Welcome to a new series where we take tech on the road, explore a travel destination and test the gear out in real life. This is Field Tested. Hey folks, this video is brought to you by Lens Pro to Go. I get all my rentals for them. Check them out at the link on screen. Use the code GEAROUT15 for 15% off your next order. No surprise the 600 mil is big, but let's just look at it in comparison. This is the 70 to 200. This is the 200 mil F2. This is a 150 to 600 from Tamron. And this is the 600 mil F4. Okay, the reason I went for the 600 F4 is in terms of focal length to aperture, it's the best bang for buck for a Nikon. Well, not bang for buck, but the best ratio. Yes, you've got the 400 28, which is a full stop faster, but if we put a 1 4 teleconverter on that, it becomes a 560 F4, whereas the 600 is obviously longer. There's also the 800mm 5.6, which is longer than the 600mm. But if I put my 1.4 teleconverter on the 600, I end up with an 860mm 5.6, so I get even further. And being an F4 lens, the 600mm, I can use a 1.4, or 2 times teleconverter and still have full autofocus on my modern Nikon bodies. So overall, it's going to get us closer to the birds with the fastest possible aperture. Taking a look around the lens, you can see this has a giant tripod collar, which we're going to need when we're using it on the Gitzo gimbal head on this trip and it's got a nine blade rounded aperture for smooth blur. It uses a 40.5 millimeter drop in filter and this lens is coming in at 3.8 kilos, which is heavy, but not really for the size. It's almost a full kilogram lighter than the previous version 600 F4, thanks to its use of lighter fluorite elements. Hi folks, greetings from the north of Iceland. We're now in Akureyri, you can see a cruise ship coming in in the fjord there. I've been shooting with the 600 mil for about a week now and the majority of our bird shooting is done. Our first stop to look at the birds was at Snaffles Nest Peninsula. There's a whole range of different seabirds here and I quickly found that whilst having a great long lens on a high quality gimbal was a big advantage, they fly so fast, it's really hard to actually keep them in the viewfinder. So I found myself sometimes relying on handheld shots to just keep up with them. Birds flying around with the nest building material in their mouth was really interesting, but so hard to catch them. But later we found the little pond that they were actually picking up the pieces of straw and that made for some nice photos as they took off. Not being a bird expert, I found that the birds were quite unpredictable, but like anything, the more you shoot it, the more you'll get to know their habits and when the moments of action are likely to be and your hit rate is sure to improve. So I've had a fair bit of hands-on time with this guy now. And first of all, I have to say, for the size, it's not that heavy. Um, I am able to hand hold it for short amounts of time. If I, you know, a handful of shots, or if I dig my elbow in, I can get steady shots at a reasonable shutter speed with the great VR anyway, I'm able to get a decent shot with it. That said, 
It does get fatiguing. I guess it kind of goes without saying. Being this big, it is still somewhat heavy. And then having the tripod is really important. So you need to be committed to using this lens because you're going to be carrying it around with a big sturdy tripod every time that you want to use it. Now for some jobs, that's totally fine. For others, that's going to be a little bit limiting. Now the other thing, being 600 mil, it's incredibly long, but it's actually any long lens is quite niche. You don't want to run out and buy a four, five, six, or 800 mil lens until you really know what focal length is going to do it for you. Our next big location for birding is a famous sea cliff home to hundreds of thousands of migrating puffins, gannets, and guillemots. Atlantic puffins are so cute. They stand about eight inches tall on land and have a 20 to 25 inch wingspan. They're actually incredibly clumsy flyers. They seem to fall off the cliff face and flap furiously to keep themselves in the air and they tend to crash land back down to earth, but they're excellent divers. They actually use their wings as paddles and their feet as rudders to propel themselves through the water. Fun fact about puffins, most of the year they're just boring old black and white. They only get that colorful beak during nesting season. Whilst they're incredibly noisy whilst they're nesting, they're actually silent at sea and are quite proficient hunters. Now I did find for the puffins a 600 was great and the only thing is that any bird in flight tracking it with a really long prime lens becomes incredibly difficult. I actually found I got more shots where they were moving erratically using the 70 to 200 on a crop body with the two times teleconverter. I was able to frame it up at 70 mil and then keep zooming in through the shot to get a nice close shot. With this, it's so hard to keep it in frame, even if you are able to successfully, you know, maneuver this big beast around. And when it's windy, which it often is in Iceland, this becomes a huge weather vane and it's catching the wind and makes it quite difficult to shoot. Being that Iceland is essentially a series of volcanoes, there's no surprise that it's incredibly geothermically active. About 25% of the country's power supply comes from geothermic energy, but all of their energy is renewable resources. It's either hydro or geothermal. All of this geothermic activity provides a really dramatic landscape. These drone shots showing the rich blue water with frozen ice inside it, surrounded by bubbling steam coming to the surface at hundreds of degrees centigrade, makes for a pretty dramatic shot. On this trip, we visited a beautiful fjord in the northwest of Iceland and came across this old mansion right on the edge of the fjord that was really dilapidated but still beautiful. Apparently, a German couple has bought it and are in the progress of doing it up to turn it into an Airbnb. The group loved being able to shoot that with the backdrop of the Rocky Mountains. One of my guests brought along his 800mm f5.6 monster lens, so you can see them side by side here. It's even bigger again, and it comes paired with a 1.25 teleconverter, bringing it up to a 1000mm f8. And the teleconverter and lens are matched sets only to go with each other. Next up, we visited Vigo Island. Iceland is home to one of the largest colonies in the world of eider ducks, whose down is prized for being super warm. It's a really unique symbiotic relationship between humans and the ducks, where the humans protect them from foxes and at the end of the season collect the down feathers, which is extremely valuable for making warm clothing and rugs. Back in Aquary, folks. Now, I found the image quality from this guy is supreme. Whilst the versatility of the 70 to 200 with a teleconverter on a crop was great, it doesn't match the performance of this guy. But one interesting little thing that I found, the two times teleconverter gives me great results on the 70 to 200 E lens. But on this one, I'm not happy with the results. The 1.7 Mark III gets better results on this guy than the two. And it's not to do with shutter speed, it's not to do with focus, the images are in focus, they're just not that crisp. They're a little bit hazy. They, it doesn't look like it was shot with a super premium lens, which is a shame because being able to get this up to 1200 mil f8 is great. I did, however, get some at that focal length. Let's show a couple now. And they're fine for use. I'm happy with the outcome. But there were others like these where I really didn't think it was up to the task. I've said this before and I'll say it again. 
Nikon seem to hold back some special magic dust when it comes to the super tele lenses. Something like a 70 to 200, if you've been using kit lenses, you get to that and it's like, wow, this is so well built and the focus is so fast and the results are so phenomenal. When you get to something like this, it's just a whole new world. It's hard to believe how fast this thing focuses when you compare it to say a 150 to 600 or even you know a 70 to 200. This is right up there with it. And the fact that it's moving all that glass around and it's giving you such great results, I can't say that it flat out justifies the 12 or $13,000 price, but it's certainly you can see where that money's going and they haven't skimped on the, the engineering of this in terms of the hands in, in hand performance and the final images. Despite the unseasonal weather waking up to a snowstorm, this is a beautiful time of year to be in Iceland. All the animals are having their babies, so there's baby horses and sheep and goats wandering the fields with their mothers. If you're a horse lover, do check out my upcoming horse muster tour to Iceland, mattgranger.com forward slash Iceland. You'll find all the details. Now, the shooting with the 600 was a dream. It's a beautiful lens, but I think anything other than birds and long off wildlife unless you really know the sport or whatever it is you're thinking to shoot well and know that 600 mil is going to be absolutely perfect for you, it would be difficult. The reason I say that, birds, you basically want to get as close as you possibly can. But if you were, say, shooting soccer or volleyball or whatever, the action moves around and they're going to be getting closer and further, you might find that it's actually too long for a lot of applications. And at that huge price point, unless you really have a lot of money or you're shooting with it, you know, every month, then I would recommend that you consider renting the lens. There's a kid coming through the frame, or did we not see them? I'll do that again. And unless you've got a bunch of money or you're shooting with it basically every month, renting it is going to be a better option for most people. So do check out Lens Pro to go. Use the link in the caption below and the coupon Gear Out 15 to get 15% off your next order with them. Thanks for the loaner. Thanks for joining us. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I'll see you soon.